Welcome to another episode of Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen. Of course, I'm your host, J.J. Kitchen. Guys, got another big one today. Uh, just finally after the bye week, uh, I think Pitt fans, I think I think Pitt football needed a break um, from everything that's been going on, especially to the, the four-game losing streak that uh, Pitt's currently on right now. But Pitt is back at it this week, uh, the next opponent being Louisville. Uh, but the big thing this week, obviously, is now Monday, and it's – now the, the conversation between Pat and Arduzzi and the discussion of what changes are we going to see as this season goes on. And there were some really big changes that we had talked about in terms of what needs to change, um, major changes that need to be made. Um, but Pat and Arduzzi really goes into it, and we're going to talk about that today and what he talked about in his, in his, uh, in his press conference today, pre-gaming and, pre and pre-showing uh, Louisville. Guys, before we talk about the video today, please subscribe down below, like the video, comment. Always love the comments from you guys, but more importantly, the channel continues to grow because of you guys and the continual uh, support of the channel. We really appreciate everything you guys do, but more importantly, uh, it's what makes this stuff fun is being able to talk to you guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, as we get into it today, um, guys, you can imagine, obviously, that the past couple of videos I've talked to you guys about is the changes that need to be made for Pitt to even consider some type of success after the bye week. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, that was very noticeable this year, the bye week came at an earlier point, um, I think is a saving grace for Pitt uh, in terms of what this season has continually looked like. Uh, I think it came at a really good time and coming early. Uh, it was only five games in. There's still seven games left in the season. But for Pitt to achieve any type of success, uh, there were numerous changes that I said Pitt would have to go through. We're going to see some of those changes. The number one thing that is, is clear uh, that everyone's really been looking for, is, including myself, is Christian Velu. All right, and his dad, obviously, Martin, tweeted out recently uh, talking about the pronunciation. The, 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 the last name really sounds a lot like Mario Lemieux. Uh, Christian Velu is, uh, is how it's really pronounced. Uh, we'll continue to go through that. I'll continue to mess it up from, from time to time, but We'll get, we'll get better at it. Um, Christian is going to be that guy going forward. And I think it was so crucial to get a change of quarterback because the confidence of Phil Jakovic, as we've talked about, is has not been good. Uh, the, the body language, the consistent mistakes, the easy throws he misses, um, it, it's been numerous times. And it's just like it's almost Phil takes one step forward. And I talked about the North Carolina game where the first half really looked actually really good. He was, he was really – Accurate. They were moving the football the first two drives of the game. You see a couple touchdowns. Um, but then he gets hurt and he gets hurt and doesn't play in the second half. And it kind of like prolongs that that situation to where you, you really still needed to make a change. Um, but it really just gave the fuel to the fire to say, hey, he played a good first half. He couldn't finish the game. You got to give him an extra shot. Well, they gave an extra shot. Virginia Tech, really the the one of the teams that when you looked at in terms of what Pitt's schedule looked at. It, it had to be a win. It, it really did. And it, it was an absolutely embarrassing game uh, in, in terms of how the offense played. Uh, only only really two two good offensive explosive plays. Uh, the defense was on the field from the majority of the game. They got tired. Uh, the defense fell apart towards the end because of how much they played and just a lopsided uh, time of possession, what we saw. Um, but Christian being able to be the starter – but more importantly, two weeks to prepare for Louisville, which is going to be a top 15 team coming off a big victory against number 10 Notre Dame. Uh, really just handled Notre Dame and, and really embarrassed Notre Dame on national television. Um, that's going to be a conversation down the road for you know, when we face Notre Dame. What does this team really look like you know, when we face Notre Dame? Obviously, we'll be, we will be underdogs in that game, that's for sure. Um, but Louisville. 6-0, and Jeff Brom, a guy that's just gotten there. That is his alma mater. Um, I thought he did a really good job at Purdue with the, with the li limited amount of resources they have, lack of NIL money. Now he goes to Louisville where you have a great base, a great fan base. Certainly you have a lot of NIL money to play with because of the donors they have there, uh, tremendous facilities. It kind of is going all hands on deck uh, for Louisville at this point. But Jeff Brom's in a really good situation, but his first year sitting at 6-0, and um, it's been a long time since Louisville was six. Last time they were six and zero, and it was in the Big East days, that's for sure. Um, but this is a really good opportunity for Pitt to figure out which guys are not going to quit on the season. But more importantly, the changes that we're going to talk about. But obviously, Christian um, being the number one, it's the most important position 
on the football field, the quarterback position. And one of the things I talked about, you know, preseason was it would really depend on what Pitt would be like this year based on the quarterback position. And it's kind of fallen to that to that extent. Mediocre quarterback play has allowed teams to stick around, but more importantly, lose games that they should not have lost. I think competent quarterback play. Pitt loses to, uh, to Cincinnati 27-21. Competent quarterback play probably wins that game. Same thing in West Virginia. You know, I, I think that game, when you look at it 17-6, to West Virginia scored 10 points, you know, by gaining 16 yards um, due to the, the, the offensive failures, the turnovers. If those turnovers don't occur, they don't score those 10 points. So they're possibly only scoring to seven points. And, what you know, can we, can we drive down the field? Not, not even touchdowns, just field goals at that point. But when you look at Christian, I think that this is a really good opportunity for him as we find out, is this guy truly the future of what we're looking at for Pitt football next year as we go into 2024? Is he good enough to play at the Power 5 level? Obviously, a transfer from Penn State. What does he look like in terms of preparation? Um, for, for me personally, when I when I look at this, you know, I'm happy to see this because, one, that a change needed to happen. But number two, I, I love how he gets two weeks. And he's not being thrust into the game halfway through or he's been sitting on the bench for two and a half quarters, two quarters. He gets two full weeks to prepare for Louisville, which is a great team. They're great, they're explosive on offense, good defense, that's for sure. But two weeks to prepare for you know a power five opponent in Louisville, actually getting to, to develop that chemistry with the wide receivers. Uh, Pitt obviously practiced during the bye week. They talked about how the you know the Thursday practice. I think they practiced Thursday and Friday. They had off Sunday. They came in and watched a little bit of tape uh, on Monday, giving them a little time off. But they needed to practice. This team's one and four for a reason. You know the the missed tackles from the Virginia Tech game was a, was a really big thing that we looked at. But the overall, when you get a quarterback, when you're now committing to a change, and he gets two weeks to prepare uh, for a really difficult opponent coming up is a really good, 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 really, really good thing for Christian. Um, I'm excited to see what he does in this offense. Me personally, I, I think it can be a little bit better. Um, I expect it to be better because of how Christian is. Um, we've seen over duration that, you know, it, he's known to, to push the ball into certain places to where it's tight, you know, turnovers and whatnot. We've seen in a couple games. Um, but I think just lack of communication between the quarterback, just the change of quarterback, uh, Kenny Johnson running his deep route, there's an interception there. I, I just feel like there was mis miscommunication there. That kind of stuff can be cleaned up. Um, but more importantly, you know, Frank Signetti needs to be better. Um, one of the things that I talked about that just through the first five games, it's been very consistent is the lack of play call, the lack of explosive plays. Um, you know, the, the game plan against for, a prime example is against for, uh, West Virginia. Uh, certainly no trust in Phil Dracovic. And, and you know, the, the game plan was pretty much how I really saw it is it mimicked Western Michigan in, uh, in, in, in 2022 when uh, Nate Yornell played. It was more of just ground and pound and being able to throw the football at certain portions of the game. If Pitt wants to win some football games going forward, they're going to need to pass the football. And that's at the quarterback position needs to be better. The play calling needs to be better. But also, too, the wide receiver room needs to be better. And, you know, the, the first change was Christian Veyer, uh, Veilu, sorry, Veilu, that was the change. But now, obviously, Kenny Johnson is listed as a starter or co-starter along with Dejon Reynolds. As we see this season go on, I really do believe that, that Kenny Johnson can be one of those guys that really is, is, a, is a difference maker, a guy that can be a really good player here for three to four years. I think he has the potential to go to the next level. I think he just for, for being such a young guy and being able to show the talent, but more importantly, just not the agility, but the speed he has. He's a larger wide receiver, very athletic, very fast. Those kind of things, when you have those attributes, you can be really beneficial to the offense, but more importantly, build out those really explosive plays, but really push the ball down the field. Uh, I'm really excited to see what he does. I think by season's end, he'll be a starter somewhere. Um, again, I, you know, I think Kanate Mumfield has actually done a really good job. He made a tremendous catch in the Virginia Tech game, completely laid out, made a made a catch. Um, I, th I think he's going to be a consistently a starter, consistently. Um, the, the question I really have about at this point, you know, we saw an injury uh, to Bub Means during the Virginia Tech game. He left that game. Uh, obviously, the bye week to get healthy. We'll see if he returns this week. Um, but he's a guy that's got to continue to step up. He, he's really got to show that he's able to play at this level. And, you know, we could really say, you know, it's between, you know, a couple of drop passes here and there, but obviously to the back quarterback play, what are we going to see this week where 
know, Christian is a guy that's got a you know pretty ball. I've said from the beginning that he's got a pretty ball out of his hand, a tight spiral, very good electric arm, man. I mean, he can throw the ball at the, um, um, a mile, to say the least. So you're going to see a little bit of a difference between the two quarterbacks, between Phil Jakovic and Christian, where the guy's being able to you know, Christian's going to be a guy that looks like the ball just looks great. He's going to be able to make those throws, strong arm, or maybe Jakovic really kind of lacked those attributes that we really truly needed. But it's going to be fun to see those. But the wide receiver room, Bub Means, if he comes back, he's got to step up because I think that coming towards the end of the season, I think Bub Means, if he continues to play, he's playing, to continue to, to, to play the way he is playing, I, I see him not being a starter for very much longer as Kenny Johnson's going to pass him up. Uh, and you'll see Kenny Johnson, uh, Kanate Mumfield, and Dejon Reynolds. Obviously, Dejon, Dejon Reynolds, Kanate Mumfield, and Kenny Johnson, all guys will be, will be back next year. Um, uh, from, from everything I've seen, if this continues, obviously, I think in a different offense, a more explosive offense, if Pat Narduzzi goes with that uh, with a new hire, uh, we'll see what that looks like. But the wide receiver room has got to be better. Got to create more separation. We'll see what they do. But more importantly, we'll see if more freshman wide receivers get on the field as the season goes on. Uh, the, the next change that I like to see, Branson Taylor is now the starter at left tackle, moving from right tackle to left tackle because now Mac Gonsalves is uh, out for the year. We had seen that at the Virginia Tech game, but now it's it's official. He's going to be at left tackle. Ryan Bayer going to be the starting right tackle. Uh, obviously, Jake Cradle still the starter at, uh, at center from what we've seen from the depth chart. Um, and then, obviously, um, when it comes to the backup to Branton Taylor at left tackle, Jackson Brown, a legacy name. Obviously, Jackson Brown's dad played here at Pitt. Uh, you know, moons ago, obviously a tremendous player at Pitt, a legacy name. Jackson Brown, obviously the transfer from Cal. I think he's going to be a tremendous player, physically gifted. There's been a lot of good talk about him coming out of camp, but obviously joining the, the, the team a little bit later, he needs time to develop in terms of you know understanding the offense, the assignments, uh, especially in a pro style system. Uh, it's certainly not something easy to pick up. So I think he's going to be a very good player. But now that the fact that he's now on the two deep is something that really just picks up steam and says, hey, He's now learning the offense, and he's starting to look really good when it comes to this offense. We'll continue to see if he gets on the field. Um, but also, too, at left guard, um, man, you know, we had Blake Zubovic. Obviously, I like that. Obviously, an older guy. He's been starting the entire year. They moved him from right guard to left guard now. Obviously, that, that's going to continue to look good uh, in terms of just in, uh, in terms of uh, seniority. When it comes to right guard, we saw Jason Collier uh, no longer has an oar, but a starter at right guard. The one thing I want to put out there is, you know, I understand he's a starter in terms of the depth chart, but from what we've seen from Pat Narduzzi is not exactly the most honesty uh, when it comes to these depth charts, uh, especially two with rotations. Could he be the starter coming into this week against Louisville and going out there? He could. But, you know, don't be surprised if you see a guy, um, you know, obviously like B.J. Williams, or uh, Jake Cradle shifting over and Terrence Moore staying in the game. Um, I would just be shocked if Jason Collier continues to start for a long period of time. Uh, he, he's just been – it's been a true weakness, to, to put it lightly. Um, he's not played well up to this point. Um, you know, hey, if they, feel, if they feel like that's their best option, that's great. Me, personally, I, I sent a tweet out earlier this week. Um, I like – I would really like Terrence Moore to stay at center, get him the reps because now he's going to be the starter next year at center. Um, but also, too, pushing Jay Cradle to right guard is a really good move, in my opinion. I think he's a tremendous offensive lineman. Struggled early on in the season, but really started to rebound, as you saw as the season has gone on. I think putting him at right guard really solves your problems. Or if you want to keep him at center, put Terrence Moore at guard or put B.J. Williams at guard. I, I, I just I think there's other options that are there than just continuing to stick with Jason Collier, who has really struggled this year. Um, you know, and obviously hasn't had a lot of playing time in his, in his five years at Pitt. Um, just would really like to see B.J. Williams, Terrence Moore, or Jake Cradle really take over that spot to really figure out what's our best lineup. Um, and again, Bat Narduzzi has put these names down on the depth chart before. It's been years of doing this. A lot of times, you know, the pick comes out with a different starting lineup than what's presented on the depth chart. He's kind of even said that to where things change and he just puts stuff down. I think that kind of stuff needs to be looked at. I think this week of practice will really change things too. As it's only Monday, Pitt's going to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and have their walkthrough on Friday, and then the game on Saturday here at Acrisure Stadium. But we'll continue to keep an eye on that. But I like how Jackson Brown has really cracked the two deep. 
I think for his name to be put on there really shows he's now learning the offense uh, and his assignments, but more importantly, showing what we really thought from what we heard from his trains for a cow. The kid's going to be pretty good. Um, I'm happy to see that as he continues to progress, especially through the bye week. Obviously, uh, Jason Collier, we talked about him. Uh, Isaiah Montgomery, too, also cracking it. The other or at uh, it guard as well. That's a good developmental player. I think Isaiah Montgomery, he just he has the physical aspects of what you're looking for in an offensive lineman. Loves, con- loves violence, loves contact. I'm happy to see him on there as well. So you're seeing some of these guys get developed. It's now just time to, sh- to really show it and prove it in a game form. Uh, two other two other spots that we noticed this week. Uh, Bam Brema is now the starter defensive end. Uh, Nate Temple, the backup. Uh, Nate Temple really started the year out as a starter. Um, he's done well at times, but just not consistent. I think they're looking for more consistency, and, and Bam Brema has got a lot of praise from, from his time in camp to, as the season has gone on. Obviously, he's not been perfect, but at the same time, though, I give the defense a lot of credit because they're on the field so much because the time of possession has just looked horrendous because the offense just can't get things going. There's no identity, no run game, no pass game. When you're on and off the field like that, you know, the defense is really just – it's unfair at this point to put so much pressure on them at this point. Um, but I like this move with Bam Brema now being the starter, um, Nate Temple being the backup. I would just really like to see what, you know, like Nakai Johnson take that next step the four-star de- defensive end out of West Mifflin. I- I'd still like to see him take that jump. Dayon Hayes, I- I'd like to see more of an aggressive style out of Dayon Hayes. I thought he had a bigger year so far this year, but really hasn't turned out that way. He's still, he's still been good. Hasn't been great, but good. I'd like to see him take that step from good to great as the second half of the season really starts up. Um, but there are other potential uh, defensive linemen. Obviously, Samuel Okunlola, a guy defensive end. He's done well at times, but not consistent. Uh, you'd like to see that as well. So those are really four defensive ends that we're looking at. And obviously, Jimmy Bear Scott, he's been really in between inside and out. I think he's, again, he's going to be a great defensive lineman for Pitt. Just continue to give him time. Really just just, just mature and just take that next step. But the, the way you take that next step for him is you continue to get reps. And I think that's really one of the good things for him. Really hasn't played the first two years. Now, in his, in really in his third year, or in his second year, I'm sorry, in his second year, starting to take that next step to where the playing time's there. Now you're starting to see these plays. You're starting to get more reps. You see that next step being taken, and I think he's going to continue to be really good for Pitt as the years go on. Um, yeah, he's got a tremendous high school football coach as well. The guy's been great in development, uh, been in numerous games, but more importantly, his coaching and development of him and his staff were great uh, where Jimmy came from. And I'll tell you what, those guys are tremendous, and he's going to continue to get better. Jimmy Bear Scott is going to be a guy that we're going to see for a long time here at Pitt. But the last position, uh, Marquez Williams listed over A.J. Woods, um, but it's still an, it's still an or. Um it's still an or, but I think, you know, obviously Marquez is still going to be the starter because he said he's a veteran guy. He's been here long enough. But at the same time, though, we saw that change. Uh, how much of a change is it really? I mean, they're still going to rotate in, you know, Marquez Williams, A.J. Woods, and M.J. Devonshire. What I want to see now is, you know, the Ryland Gannies of the world, uh, Crumpley, uh, Tamarian Crumpley, guys like that. I, I want to see the other guys um, in the backdrop that really haven't gotten a lot of reps where are they at in terms of development? If we start to see more of those guys play, I think that that means that in practice they're doing really, really well. Um, and then when you see different guys start hitting the field, it means really in terms of what the practice looks like, we're not able to see that, obviously. We're not there to watch it. But if you see a new guy getting reps, he's doing well in practice, and the, and the staff's really going to trust them. Uh, and obviously on the back end, you know, you still got your Donovan McMillan, uh, the, 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 the hometown hero out of uh, Peters Township, first year at Pitt. Man, he has had a hell of a year. Uh, really good at tackling. If it's in his area, he's going to make the tackle. But more importantly, really good in terms of being aggressive. A, a guy that's really, really fits Pat Narduzzi's defense. He'll be here for a couple more years. Really good to see him really take that next step. Um, but when you look at overall the changes here, they're good changes. But now it's time to put that stuff together. You, you, now you have two weeks really to figure out, okay, here's where our problems are. What are we good at? What are we bad at? Um but one of the things, obviously, the players, I like to see a difference. But the coaching staff's got to be better, too. You know, one of the things I was watching recently after the Red River rivalry this past week in between Oklahoma uh, and Texas, you know, Brett Venables talked about how the coaching staff, it starts with the coaching staff. You know, it's like it's like your game seven or it's a fourth down and goal or fourth down and one. Really presenting that type of atmosphere 
but more importantly, that that just that mentality that every single play in the moment means something. And I think that's so important for this football team in, in terms of Pitt because one, they are at one and four. I think the way you look at it now with the opportunity that they have after the bye week, you just look at it. You're, you're zero and zero. Started as a new season. You know, the opportunity is right there in front of you, but I want to see which players consistently play hard throughout the 60 minutes of, the, of each and every football game because there is so much opportunity on this schedule. You know, Louisville, Duke, Florida State, Notre Dame, you know, Wake Forest, Boston College. There's plenty of opportunity on this schedule to prove what do we have in terms of what this team is looking like this season, but more importantly, going forward. I think it's just such a great opportunity for Pitt to say, hey, we, do, we didn't do what we wanted to do in the beginning. The quarterback play was bad. The play calling was bad. The offensive line play was bad. Here's your opportunity to say, you know what? It really is now pit against the world and pit against everybody in college football. Go out there and make a difference. You have an opportunity to really solidify your place, not just for the rest of this year, but for next year at this point. And I think that if you know the, the guys that you see that don't stop, just don't quit. There's no loss in motor. They're consistent. You know, they go from a guy that's maybe consistent here and there to now consistent all the time. That's what you really want to see, and, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to start looking for in terms of what this game this week is going to look like. Um, you know, as we sit here today, do, do I have Pitt winning against Louisville? I don't. You know, Louisville's a damn good football team. I mean, they're top 15 for a reason that they've beaten good teams. The ACC is just you know, in my opinion, good this year, like it was previous years. There's good football in this conference, and it's now showing as you know whether it's beating the Big Ten or the SEC during the, during the non-con games. We're seeing it. The ACC is a good football conference, especially this year when they've been really kicking the tails out of other conferences this year. But these changes needed to be made. I like the changes. Now let's start to see how we grow off of it. Okay. And then we'll see if Jason Collier starts this week. We'll see if they rotate some other guys in. Personally, me, I, I just want one group out there and just start to gel. Just start to gel together and really see what we were able to produce. Um, but overall, that's what really what Pat Narduzzi talked about. You know, talked about how you know he, he really believes in this group. This is a positive group. They're not going to get negative in terms of, hey, what happened the last five weeks is now behind us. The bye week has really started our whole new season. Um, but more importantly, it's a team game. It's the we, not me mantra. And these guys together collectively need to stick together. But now it's time to turn the motor back up. Seven games left in the season. There is so much opportunity to turn this season around due to the fact that the bye week came early. You got seven games left. Show what you can really do. Let, let's see what this team is really made of. What what changes were really made? How, how did this team look? You know, we you know, you know, heard about the, the players only meeting. You know, you know, Phil Dracovic got up in front of the team saying, look, guys, you know, just not my year. Um, you know, going to be benched. And obviously, Frank Signetti made that call. You know, do I agree? Do I really think that Pat Narduzzi allowed Frank Signetti to make that call on his own? No, there were certainly conversations. Uh, that's just a media type of tactic where he's just putting that out there. There's no way that he allows Frank Signetti to make that decision on his own. You know, Frank might have brought it up to him and said, you know what? Fine, let's just go with it. But. <laughs> Pat Narduzzi is having that conversation with Frank Signetti no matter what, and especially, too, in the past couple of weeks, he's really had that conversation. But now it's time to see what this team looks like. What does it look like under pressure? What does it look like going forward? Can you salvage this season somewhat? No matter what's going to happen, the, the season's going to be disappointing regardless because you're already 1-4. You already have four losses. The only, way, the only thing you can do now is just win out to match what you did last year, which is not going to happen. Go out there. Play with pride, but more importantly, play with your teammates and really you know, play for your teammates. Play for the team, pride. At this point, show what you have at this point, no matter what. There's no quit. There's no, there's, there's, there's no letdowns, nothing. Just go out there and prove yourself and prove to the people that are now doubting you that, hey, this is a good football team. We slipped up in the beginning of the season. There's plenty of talent on this football team, like I've been saying the entire time. There is talent here. It's just time to start using it. It's time to start developing. It's time to start pushing it. Live in the moment. Live in the moment now and push yourself to be the best version that you can be of yourself, but more importantly, your teammates. Start pushing your teammates. Live in the moment like it's fourth and one every single play on defense. Live in the moment on offense. It's first down and 10. Don't be lackadaisical. Get aggressive. Let's start pushing the ball. Let's start getting aggressive. Let's start being explosive. Let's see what they can do. Does Frank Signetti get out of his own ways and try to get better? We'll see what that looks like. But going forward, I'm excited to see what the second half of the season looks like for Pitt 
because there's a lot of opportunity here. But more importantly, this team will tell us what are we going to see in the future. That's what I really want to see. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in again to the video. Please subscribe down below, guys. The channel is continuing to blossom because of you guys. And again, I'm more than more than thankful for what you guys have done, the comments, the shares. Um, the channel is growing at a rapid rate because of you. But more importantly, talking about football, especially college football and pit football, is fun because of you. And again, guys, I'll see you there at uh, Acrisure Stadium this weekend. It's always fun to meet you guys. Uh, the amount of people that walk up to me and just say, hey, man, I watch your podcast. Hey, are you JJ Kitchen? That kind of stuff is just so cool. But more importantly, just knowing that there's great supporters out there and just lucky to have a great fan base like Pip. Guys, again, thank you for everything that you do. As always and forever, hail to Pit. I'll see you guys.